Welcome to Xamega videos. In the previous videos, we learned how to create a new object model project, import your object model from an existing database, and generate an entity data model for a business layer. In the current video, I'm going to show you how to enrich your object model by defining a service layer so that you could generate WCF service contracts and configurations. So let's open up the employee file. What we have done here so far, we define the types and enumerations that are being used by the employee object and also move the employee child objects such as address and pay history to be the sub-objects of the employee. Now we want to create an employee service that will allow reading or updating employee information and possibly provide other operations. The easiest way to get started on that is to add the model CRUD operations. Let's right click on the employee file and generate the model CRUD operations. Reload it. What it does is it defines the structures for the object keys as well as adds the create, read, update, delete and read list operations for each object. This would be the starting point for our employee service structure. From this point on, we can start removing operations and parameters that we don't want and add the ones that we need. For an employee pay history key, let's define the full structure instead of the, just the key structure. That's going to have all the fields. We'll do it by copying the parameters from the read list operation on the pay history object. Here. Let's also rename it to be the employee pay data. That's how we define the structure. Next, we want to remove the generated pay history operations and make it part of the employee read operation instead. So let's go ahead and delete the operations. And we'll just add it to the read output as another parameter of type structure. We'll name it pay history and reference the structure employee pay data that we just defined and we'll set the list attribute to be true to indicate that this is a list of structures and not a single structure. Let's also take a look at the generated read list operation. The input consists of all the fields of the object as search criteria along with the operation for each field, such as equals or not equals, or gr greater than or less than, etc., to allow for maximum search flexibility. It may seem that defining structures and operations could take a lot of time, but most of it is actually designing your application that is specific to your business needs. This is in fact where the rubber meets the road. For any operation and service you define, you can also specify any number of custom WCF attributes and their configurations. For example, let's configure a WCF impersonation behavior for the delete operation. To do that, we add the config element and then a WCF operation attribute called operation behavior and set the impersonation to let's say not allowed. By the same token if we want to define service attributes we do it in the configuration for the object. Let's define a session mode service attribute. That's on the service contract. set it to allowed.
Now, to generate the actual service contracts, let's add a project called adventureworks.services to our solution file. This library can be used by both service and the client tiers and would be shared between them. Let's also check the configuration of the WCF service contracts generator. The output path is set to output one file per service. To the new project's location and group them in folders by module name. The add to project parameter is set to also add the generated files to the new project file. So let's run the WCF service generator and review the generated files. Okay, we need to reload the project and we see that the files have been added to it. So the generated service contracts use the open source Xomega framework library for the base interface as well as for the fall contracts. So let's add a reference to that library. Okay, here. As you can see, our custom WCF service and operation attributes have been properly added to the generated interface and to the delete method impersonation. We can also get the endpoints for our services automatically added to the server and client configuration files. In order to do that, we need to set up the endpoint based parameters in the global model configuration. So let's add a new item to the model project and pick the model configuration as the template. And this is where it allows to set up the namespace for the generated services and also configure the endpoints with the bindings and the base local address. Here we just have the standard TCP IP network endpoint. Let's also check the generator configuration. The output path points to the app.config of the adventureworks.entities project, which is where we'll have the implementations of our services. Now let's run the generator and review the output file. The generator added the service with all the endpoints to the configuration. This may not look very impressive with just one service and one endpoint, but could be helpful if you have many services with many endpoints. Now we are able to generate the WCF service contracts that you can implement in the service layer using the Entities framework. This concludes this video for defining a service layer with Xomega.net. In the following videos, we're going to show you how to generate a WPF or Silverlight presentation layer based on the powerful open source Xomega framework. Thank you for watching.